Hey, it's John and Mike, BrewDashDudes.com, and we do have a piece of equipment here. We are uh, uh, influencers. We are a part of the uh, affiliate group uh, for Vivor, and uh, they have a whole bunch of different products available for us to test out and try. Uh, I was trying to get a, an all-in-one brewing uh, piece of equipment, but they were all sold out of that, so they sent us, for educational purposes only, this distilling rig. How about that? Nice. And Mike put this together so he can take us through all the different uh, parts of it. Um, but certainly we can use this for a whole bunch of things that we could distill our own water for our brewing yes, purposes. Absolutely. We could get essential oils for uh, your wife's new soap, uh, soap <laughs> business <laughs> on Etsy. Yes. Coming soon. Uh, and, and other things too. But uh, let's talk more about the, the setup here. What? Tell me more about the kettle and then what are these two small uh, things here on top? Okay, so this is uh, a classic, really uh, straightforward design, what you'd call a pot still. Okay. So big pot, this thing is about eight gallons. Um, so big pot still here. Um, coming out of the back, I'll get some closer pictures to edit into the video here. But um, this thing would go on your heat source, but which would contain whatever it is you're trying to distill. So yes. if you want to do distilled water, you would just simply have your water in there. You start heating it until vapor came up and starts coming from the through the lid out to the top of this thing here. And we'll go through here. We'll talk about this in a second, but you can go from here in this little pot here, there's a copper coil and that is your condensing coil. And then on the front, there's those two uh, um, silicone yeah. tubes. And this came with a nice, really small submersible pump. So you could throw that into like a bucket of uh, ice water or water with some ice packs to keep it cool. And in this little pot up here would be filled with water and going through those two little valves in the front, that would keep the, the condensing coil cold because that's what condensing is. Yep. So the hot vapor would come up out of the pot and go into the, the, to the coil. Um, if you are a backwoods moonshiner, you would call that the worm. And then so then it comes out through here. You could put a little extension on here so it's not dripping down the side of the pot, but that's where you'd want to come out. Um, so that, minus this piece of equipment, just a two vessel, that's how you do distilled water. And okay. in theory, you know, as long as you don't boil the water super, super hard, most of the mineral content stays behind and the, the vapor, the distillate is, um, uh, the vapor is just pure water, I pure O2. But, so let's come back to this little guy here. So this is just an empty pot where it comes out of the boiler and goes in here. There's a dip tube here that goes close to the bottom. This little pot is called the thumper. And the reason why it's called that is once vapor starts coming up here, it is going to loosely condense in here and fill the bottom there. So as more vapor comes through, it would start to bubble and it would take on a characteristic a sound of a, of a thumping mm. as it would go. And so um, the point of this, the thumper, is sort of like a pre, it's not true what we call reflux, but it's, um, you get a little condensate, um, uh, c condensing in there back into liquid, the thumper actually would sit slightly off, just like it is here, off here. And in a, other types of pot stills, you might be losing some heat from a poor seal on the lid or spill over heat off the bottom of the pot would heat this up. And so then you, as it all heats up, then you get your condensate going back, your, your vapor back through the worm and coming out the front. Um, so the thumper is sort of in a way a reflux, but what you can do with the thumper, because that's going to be, you're going to be catching solvent in there if you put something in here that has ethanol in it, um, like a wash of some sort. In here you could put like your juniper and your uh, other botanicals, you could okay. put your lemon peel, your rose hips, stuff like that in there to then sort of that alcohol content is a good solvent and would draw Blend, out some yeah, of those okay. essential things so yep. you can uh, create those things too. So and you collect can, it here. And yeah. collect it there. Nice. Um, okay. Yeah. So that's how that would work if you were doing that. And so in here you could put your wash and a wash is anything that's been fermented. They did provide, I don't have it in front of me, but anyway, a standard three piece airlock. Um, you, they do say you could actually do your fermentation in this. Mm -hmm and heat this, and um, um, I don't know a ton about doing that, but to me it seems like as home brewers, we're more skilled at um, than the average 
maybe whatever, making a wash. <laughs> so you could make yourself um, something to put in here. Um, but keep in mind, let's say you put five gallons in here and you, let's say you had a beer that you brewed and you wanted to distill it for educational purposes sure. or for making um, heat oil or uh, lamp fuel, ethanol, stuff like that. Um, you gotta remember too, like if you, an average strength beer being 5%, right? If you have five gallons in here, 5% is what you, is the max you would ever capture. Yeah. And you probably capture less than that due to some really complicated science of a aqueous water phase, ethanol phase. So, um, so if you had five gallons, 10% would be half gallons. So you're talking about getting a quart, yep. half of a half of a you know quarter of a gallon out of there. So am I doing my math right? I think yeah, I'm doing my math yeah, right. Yeah, close enough. So um, so you got to keep that in mind when you have a wash. What percent? ABV it is, yeah. is the best you can possibly do. And you're never going to get 100% of it. Even with super, super fancy uh, reflux column stills, uh, there's a phenomenon, the word escapes me at the moment, but it's, you can't get it all out. So that's just something to keep in mind. What do you think of the quality of this uh, particular piece of equipment? It's super shiny. Um, <laughs> it's well, great. Um, I wish the bottom was like a thicker clad, right? Just yeah. so it even more evenly distribute heat. Um, but until we really put it through some paces, I'm definitely going to try to do some distilled water in this thing because yeah. it would be cool to just run distilled water. Um, see how it, but they do talk about using uh, an induction burner. So the, the, the bottom is thick enough to use induction. Um, so that would be cool. Or if you just had a really big, solid hot plate. Yeah. Um, if you're going to do some of that other stuff, um, creating those types of vapors around an open flame is a pretty bad idea if you're not used to what you're doing. So <laughs> not that people don't do it that way. A lot no. of people do do it that way and they, they but you're, it's a risky business. So um, uh, user be warned. Yes. So, um, yes. But anyway, I think the, the, the build is great. Every single one of these little uh, connections came with like a little silicone um, O-ring, so all the fittings, when you tighten them down, they seal up really nice, which is what you want. The little thumper here, you, you can't really see it, but in a closer picture you can. There's actually a, a gasket oh, I see that, yep. that um, came with it that I put on there, so that's nice and sealed because you want that to be sealed tight. The underside of this lid has a nice gasket in it. I'll try to get a picture of that. Um, so very similar to like an SS brew bucket, you know, it's got a nice gasket in there, yep. so that's sealed up really well. Um, yeah, I mean, once I fill it with some liquid and see how well all these other Compression fittings are, are holding together should be uh, should be interesting. So, yeah. the submersible pump is pretty cute. It's just really small. I, you know, there'll be a picture of that on the screen. Um, so I, it should be more than enough to just pump a small amount of water up and around in there too. So I like the build quality. It's pretty nice. Cool. All right. Well, thank you for taking us a tour through this piece of equipment. We have discount codes uh, if you want uh, to to. Uh, enjoy this for yourself. Um, I think that you can take a look at the links in the description of this video um, and uh, take a look at uh, in whatever is applies to your area. I think I have four different links. So uh, click on the one that's applicable to you and check out this particular equipment from Vivor. So appreciate the time. Thanks for watching. Uh, you know, thanks for supporting us as true influencers in the uh, realm of uh, online affiliate marketing. Um, check out this piece of equipment and uh, we thank you for your support. Uh, if you have any uh, questions, let us know. Give us a thumbs up if you like this uh, video. Subscribe to our channel because we kind of do this kind of thing every single week, but certainly more in the home brewing realm. And we do like distilled water as a starting base for our beers. Uh, for John and Mike, brew-shoes.com, brew on. Cheers.